So I kind of went for the, the bad, and you know, it's very easy to get worked up on the bad on the timepiece gentlemen because there's a lot of things you can nitpick. Uh, my biggest nitpick was when you offer someone a hundred dollars to be seated before people already in line, or you offer you bribe a hundred dollars for the snack cart to follow you to your suite. Clearly, they were bypassing other suites where theoretically if Anthony did not offer them $100 they would have to be serving those suites in that order so they've messed up the again the order of the suites again maybe not everyone wants dessert but at least they would have that option and it is a accommodation so it's kind of a additional service right to have those carts um that's I think is very negative where you pay you pay people you bribe people essentially to get ahead and if i ever learned a restaurant did that like papa steakhouse if they ever did that if i ever learned from a video a youtube video that papa steakhouse you know i'm waiting in line so it's a friday saturday night i'm with my date and they say hey it's a 45 minute wait and then it becomes a one hour wait then it becomes a one hour and 45 minute wait and then i later learned from a youtube video that the reason my wait is so long was because somebody cut multiple people, Anthony's cut in line by paying the host, which I'm talking to about why is it being so late, a hundred dollars in cash. I would be very upset. I would let the restaurant know that this is happening. I would obviously send them the YouTube video and I would hope that the person wouldn't lose their job, but be disciplined in such a way where it would be prevented from happening because it's not fair. The restaurant would agree with me because the restaurant is not pocketing the money. Staple, crypto, it used to be called Staple Center. Crypto.com is not proffering the from the $100 tip, right? That afternoon, maybe some in some way in credit card or something, but hopefully most of the tip goes to the people in the carts. And I assume that they, actually, no, no, now, now I think about it. It wasn't, he gave them cash. He always gives them cash. So then therefore the Crypto.com actually does not profit from this. In fact, what happened is people got worse service or delayed service because of the alteration in how people were served, that they had to push this cart all the way down uh, to make it. So I think that's kind of where uh, I, I I don't like it. You know, you, you go to these restaurants because you're expecting, or you go to Staple Center, Crypto Center now, because you're expecting a level of service, you're expecting entertainment, you're expecting something that of a high quality. And I would never go to a restaurant if I learned that all someone had to do to skip the line completely was pay $100. Because that's not, that's not right, that's not fair, and that's not, that's not even, that's not ethical. And at the end of the day, that does affect the restaurant reputation poorly. It affects, you know, I mean, it just, it, 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 I mean, I couldn't even enjoy the experience. I would not never go back because I wouldn't enjoy the experience to know that there's an opportunity for someone like Anthony to cut me in line just because he paid the guy a hundred dollar bill. So uh, that's that's the bad. Now I'm going to talk about the good. I'm going to try to put it in a, a, a way that I I think he's has a little bit of marketing genius in him. I think it comes down to the fact that he takes risk. Now, why does he take more risk than a normal person? I'm a patent attorney. I'm barred by the USPTO and in the state of New York. I can't do anything too risky because then I would be disbarred. I paid a shit ton of money and a shit ton of fees every year to the New York State Bar, as does any lawyer. Uh, whether or not I practice law or patents this year, I pay a lot of money to the state bar. And I do uh, continue learning exercise uh, classes and so on. And I'm actually speaking at one in March about uh, NFTs of all things, right? And for a patent business litigation session, I don't know how many people are going to show up, but hey, it's NFTs, so why not speak about it? Uh, it's a topic I'm interested in. I have a lot to lose, right? I have my home, which I fully paid off. I have my business, which is valued at anywhere between five and eight million, which could be sued. It is being sued. So I'm being sued personally and my home is being sued because again, these are assets that people want. Anthony does not have any assets. So therefore it is very difficult to sue him. 
because you cannot sue someone who doesn't have money. And therefore he's able to take more risk. It's kind of like betting with house money. You don't really lose, right? Or you're betting with someone else's money. It's in Dragon's Den, they call it something called OPM, other people's money. And when somebody walks in on the den, so the Dragon Den is like the UK version of Shark's Tank. You kind of know, is this person like legit or by basically what they pay themselves and how they spend the money. I will always remember the episode with the two guys who invited like a GPS for a bike when your cell phone did the same thing. And they were charging like a hundred dollars a thing and they had like a big team and so on. And they had like run, they had run through like so much money, so much investor money. And Tuka, one of the dragons is like, I know why you did that. You know, you have your Lambos, you have your vacations, you have your homes. They're not the only one who does that. If you have an investor and it's not your money and you don't have any assets that can be taken, why not gamble? And this is the interesting part. And this I think is a positive part. A lot of us, you know, especially if you have kids or you have family members, you have, you know, parents to take care of, we have responsibilities. We have financial assets that would be seized during a bankruptcy. We have different degrees. You know, I was talking to someone with two degrees, two graduate degrees. I have a degree in law, of course. Um, yeah, if you get disbarred. If you're a doctor and you get, you know, your license revoked, that was a lot of years of your life that just gone down the drain. And that's a lot of money you spent only to lose your license and not be able to practice if you did something shady. So there are a lot of individuals base it, you know, maybe on how much family, maybe they have to pay a lot of money, maybe it's alimony, maybe whatever it is, they have kids. There are a lot of individuals who cannot take the same risk as Anthony. Either they have assets that can be can, that can be seized, they might have bank accounts, they might have, you know, college kids funds that they have to pay money into. Like my sister, right? She has two kids. She can take less risk than I. I can start my own business. And luckily for me, it didn't fail, but it, it's still doing really, really well. But she can't. Because she has two kids to feed, two young kids to feed. So she works a corporate job and does the best she can at the corporate job every day. I don't need to work a corporate job. I can be my own boss. And I don't need these all these clients I have. I don't even need all the prospects I get because I make a lot of money. And at the end of the day, I have a small company. I have a small agency. So I can take more risk than my sister can take. And Anthony can take far more risk than I can take because his loss is almost at zero, right? So for someone to go from a uh, you know prison to where he is, he took a lot of risk. And to get to where he wants to be with a Mark Wahlberg movie, um, he's gotta take even more. And it's fascinating watching him take these risks because most people, 99% of the people on YouTube won't ever take a damn risk in their life. They'll never start their own business. They'll never leave corporate America. They'll never, they'll never work for themselves. And this is true. I mean, I, any statistic will show you this. During COVID-19, a lot of people got laid off and forlorn. And guess what they did? They started businesses. Because at that point, there was no risk. At the point of, you know, that I was at in 2015, before COVID-19, there was a lot of risk to start a business because I could have just been a lawyer. I could have been a damn good patent lawyer making steady amounts of money at a law firm, probably a partner by now. But I said, you know what, damn it, damn it all, I'm going to go for it. And I couldn't be more happy where I am today. It's a lot of hard work, it's a lot of migraines, but I love what I do, I love the people I work with, for the most part, and it's a risk. Now I wanna see what happens when you take that to the extreme but I have too much to lose to act and behave like Anthony does, right? Bye guys.